Well, hello everyone, it is me, Media Nerd, or Silent Hazard Z, as you probably know me nowadays. But, um, yeah, I'm back with a new commentary series. This time it's on, well, I mean, the first commentary on this channel, that is, is, uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1. Or as it's called in Japan, Dragon Ball Z. I don't know why it's called that in Japan, but whatever. It's a cool sounding name, to be honest. But, whatever, uh... Yeah, here's a fun fact. In the Japanese and English releases of the game, I mean the American release of the game, uh, they have the same intro, which is basically just a, just a recreation of uh, Shala Hachala's intro. All three versions of it, by the way. And, uh, yeah, for the Japanese one, they obviously use the original uh, theme song for the show. The American release uses the absolutely fucking awful uh, Rock the Dragon song. That was used in the Ocean Dub era, and then later used in the, uh, when Funimation took over, which, by the way, to reiterate, both Ocean and Funimation dubs are made by Funimation, so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but in the PAL region, we got a different intro, and I gotta say, it's a pretty neat one. Uh, but I do at least like that they attempted to, uh, recreate Charlotte Hachala, even if the animation isn't really that great, but... It was a unique, it was a cool thing to do back in the day, and, uh, yeah. Um, anything else I want to say before I get to anything else important? Okay, so, yeah, for the reasons why I'm doing this is because, A, I was mega bored, and I don't really feel like making anything that's... I don't feel like making any reviews of right now. I mean, I still am making a review. You'll see what it is later, but it is another game based on a franchise that I'm really into. Uh... I'll give you a few guesses to what it is, but, um, uh, yeah, uh, the other reason was because, uh, well, I was watching too much Solid as Scully and his, uh, commentary videos, and I decided, well, you know what, I might as well just fucking make my own commentary videos, because why the fuck not, and plus, uh, well, it's kind of a, well, okay, to be fair, I always kind of wanted to make my own, uh, gameplay videos when I was younger, Plus, I did start out making uh, walkthrough videos in the past, for if you've seen my old YouTube channel, you'll know I made an awful, awful comment walkthrough on Sonic Adventure 2, and, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get into a bit more into that a little later, but, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, this game, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1, it is the first Dragon Ball game since Final Bout, which was a, which was a shitty 3D fighting game for the PS1. It came out in 1997, which was the same year Drumble GT ended, which didn't do so well due to ratings, no manga, and also because it had really shit sales when it came to merchandise. And well, yeah, ever since, well yeah, for five years, Drumble essentially took a long break, and in 2002, the manga and the anime were finally being re-released after so long, and of course we got a new video game. And it only goes up to Cell Saga. Uh, I'll go into that a little bit later when I feel like talking about it, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of sh I'm so disorganized, I apologize for that, I'm not getting things out quicker than it's supposed to be, but, uh... Yeah, this game is really more or less... It's essentially just really made for the fans of the franchise. Uh, if you're expecting the nuances of the story, or the finer details, uh... Sorry, you're not getting that in this, uh, game. Which is kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, though, I, eh. well, I guess it's not really that unfortunate because I mean, there's nothing really wrong with making a game that's for the fans. I guess I don't know why. So I guess maybe just because I mean, I mean, I'm just saying that because of the fact that well, this game kind of started some things. Uh, that I really hate about the fandom that they tend to say, and not just the Dragon Ball fandom, but also the anime fandom as well. Like, oh, Dragon Ball Z is just a bunch of fighting, uh, oh, it's just, uh, da da da. Really stupid crap like that. I don't want to totally blame the games for that, because, well, yeah, I mean, the games were just doing their fucking job, just being for the fans, so, yeah. But, uh, even still, though, I'm a bit bummed that we don't get it. We don't get all of the character development and all of the nuances from the story kept in the game. It's mostly just the iconic moments from the manga and, uh, anime. But, oh well, at least, it is at least pretty cool to see them 
finally given a uh, proper, well, a proper full adaptation in game mode. Well, one that's, you know, actually capable of uh, recreating them. Similar to the anime and manga, you know, if that makes any sense. Well, recreating them, I'm still fucking terrible, but um, yeah, it's, as you can tell, it's a fighting game. Pretty unique one in the sense that you can actually, you actually have a capsule system, which basically what it does is if you equip the character with uh, six capsules, you can use specific moves, techniques, and uh, basically any super and ultimate attacks if you perform certain combo moves. And um, yeah, that's that's honestly a really fucking cool thing that the games did, and I'm honestly kind of sad we never see this in any, any other Dragon Ball game after the Budokai series ended. There might be another one, but I... Actually, does Budokai Tenkaichi 3 have... Well, I mean, do the Tenkaichi games have that? I, I don't know. Zerko can correct me because he knows way more about the Dragon Ball games compared to me, because I mean... I mean, I am familiar enough with some of the games, but like... I've only really played the Budokai games, the two shitty uh, PlayStation 1 games, Xenoverse 1 and 2, Fighter Z, and, well, Tenkaichi 1 and 3. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry if I'm not talking about the story, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine for the few of you that aren't Dragon Ball fans, uh, yeah, you're definitely just wondering, what the fuck is going on here? This is fucking weird. But, um, <coughs> yeah. I hope to God this commentary isn't terrible so far. I don't think I'm doing a very good job. Uh, I think I'm just a fucking mumbly mess and I feel as if I'm taking too long to explain things. And uh, yeah, but you guys can tell me later in the comments. Don't also criticize me for not knowing much about Dragon Ball games, even though I'm a fucking Dragon Ball fan. But um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to touch upon... Uh, yeah, this game, well, the Nepal regions, for some reason, we didn't get the Funimation dub for over here. We got the uh, Japanese version of the game. But we got the Japanese voice cast with English subtitles and... Uh... Yeah, some of them, as you'll see later on in the game, are not really good translations. They're... They're like fucking... What's the best way to describe them? I don't know what's describing, but yeah, if you've seen the series or if you notice anything, any weird translation or wording, uh, yeah, because this game doesn't really have that great translation when it comes to anything. But, um, yeah, and, but also, like, uh, there's also a few times in the game where you have these, uh, action moments where they try to recreate certain moments from the series. And, uh, yeah, I fucking hate this mission so much because of how fucking annoying it is trying to make the Raditz just stay, you know, in the center, you know, of Pic stay in Piccolo's uh, range. I mean, he is in his range, but you got what I'm trying to say. I'm so terrible at explaining things, aren't I? And, uh, yeah, I kind of forgot how this is supposed to control, and, yeah, I tend to fail first time every time I replayed it. Uh, anything else I could talk about? Oh, to God, I'm not, uh... Oh to god, I'm not forgetting anything I wanted to talk about, but, um, yeah. Also, thank god I managed to, uh... Bro, when I actually managed to get there, I was happy. But, um, yeah. And, oh my god, man. Uh, Yamamoto's score, man, is just fucking amazing. I know he plagiarized a lot, but, man, he was the GOAT, man. And, uh, yeah, also another thing, uh, the game... It's also censored over here in the West. I mean, the PAL regions, I gotta... In the American release, um, the game is uncensored when it comes to, like, visual edits, uh, but in the PAL regions, uh, yeah, it's censored. But as you can see there, you do see a bit of blood. Well, the guts of Goku. For Raditz, they pretty much just made it all black. Um, yeah, that's, that's a very convincing, uh, censorship right there. But, um, yeah, also, uh... Actually, never mind. I'll get into the, uh, my Kanko Sapo thing when I get to, uh... Okay, so, how this game... Oh, excuse me for that. I nearly burped. Well, I did, but I covered it so you didn't hear it. That was a... Oh god, this country is so fucking terrible, man. I'm so awful at this. And, Jesus Christ, that running animation. Yeah, the cutscenes aren't exactly animated very well, but, um... They have their own charm. I appreciate what they were trying to do at, for the, at the time. But, um, 
Yeah, uh... Yeah. What was I gonna go on about? Oh yeah. How this game works, well for story mode, is that you first play as Goku, but then once you finished his side of the story, you then get to play as Piccolo, Vegeta, and uh... Trunks, I believe? Yeah, you get to play as uh, the specific characters that you weren't playing as beforehand uh, during uh, Goku's main missions. I don't know why it is you gotta do it that way, but um, yeah, it's a bit strange, but oh well. It's kind of similar to the uh, to Sonic Adventure, Resident Evil 2, and Mega Man X4, though a little bit different because you have to... Well, a bit, well it's a bit more closer to Sonic Adventure because... Well, for one thing, you have to start out as that specific character, you know, that being Sonic, you know, the main character. Though you can't actually change up uh, story modes, you're halfway through a character's story. Uh, on Which is pretty much similar to RE2 and Mega Man X4. So, yeah. Even still, though, the story is kind of fucking cool. It's not, well, it's pretty, it's pretty much just, well, you do want to, you know... Just an abridged version of the story, which... Like, I'll, I'll leave the negativity out, even though it, was it has been unfortunate, the story mode is... The story is essentially just, well... Just an abridged version of the story. I don't know why I keep... Yeah, as you can see right there, that's an awful translation. Meanies! Um... Yeah, uh... Also... Actually, no, I'll get to the combat a little bit later, but, um... I will say, though, even despite... My nitpicks of how, you know, how it kind of well, unintentionally affected people's opinions about the series. Uh, I do I do like the story mode because it is actually pretty cool to see how the, the uh, it's cool to see how the story of uh, Z era, well, at least up until Cell Saga at least, is uh, shown off here. And it does really hype you up to uh, get to play the game, which is a. Uh, competent and fun, uh, decently fun, uh, fighting game, but it's not really one that I recommend to any fighting game enthusiasts, like, at all, unless, unless you really love the Dragon Ball series, um, then, like, like, a really hardcore fan like me, I don't really recommend this game at all, but, you know, if you did manage to find it, like, one day at a bargain bin or, you know, at a, at, like, any game shop that sells all the video games, it, it won't be. It, it's a. It's a. It's a decent game to play if you've got anything else to do. But yeah, it's a. Hmm. The best way to put it is that the gameplay feels kind of, kind of unpolished compared to like later games like Budokai Three, Tenkaichi Three, and Fighter Z especially, which is more like you know, which is basically just a Street Fighter clone but Dragon Ball. Not a bad thing though, but I still prefer Budokai Three and Tenkaichi Three. Uh, for my own reasons, not because I'm, not because of skill issue, even though I suck at those games as well. But whatever. And uh, uh, uh I'm this commentary is terrible, and I've said that like four fucking times, haven't I? And I hope to God I'm loud enough without being too loud to make my parents angry at me because um, yeah. I've always got complaints that whenever time I was recording the old reviews, uh, my parents would shout at me saying, uh. You're speaking too loud, you're shouting too loud, even though that's the point of making videos, you're supposed to speak really loudly. And uh, yeah, I also should mention, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but yeah, I'm pretty much talking over the cutscenes because... Well, I don't really think... Well, considering the fact that was, the story is pretty much just, you know, an abridged version of the story, you know, of the manga and anime series. Well, I don't really think... I need to be quiet for any of this, and honest to god, man, I honestly should have just prepared for this commentary a little bit better. But whatever. Uh, do do comment if I'm doing I'm, I'm doing a decent job because I don't think I'm doing that well because I I feel really unorganized and I didn't don't think I did a good job. But um, yeah. Uh, as for anything else I could talk about, well, I guess I'll talk a bit more about the gameplay. Um. <coughs> okay, so the main controls is that the square button is to punch, uh, triangle is to kick, circle is to throw key blasts, and X is to guard. And uh, you can also pull up different combos and moves with the buttons as well. Even if you don't have any capsules equipped, you can pull up some pretty neat uh, moves. 
you know, provided it's not, you know, uh, any like fu furious uh, combo attacks or, you know, specials, you know, uh, supers and ultimates. And, uh, yeah. As you can see there, there, I was trying to pull up some some of the moves because this game is rather specific with its button combos. I mean, to be fair, all fighting games, you need to be really specific, but for some reason, Budokai 1 seems to be quite the bitch when it comes to pulling up the specific moves. Which is kind of strange because this is one of the more easier fighting games I've played. I mean, to be fair, I am playing it on fucking easy mode because, well, I'm a complete fucking wuss. Oh yeah, that's the shame. I play video games on easy mode because I don't like feeling pain. Even though pain is much better when it's from the real world, when you're actually working hard, not paying for my video game because... <sighs> Whatever. But, um... Yeah, I don't know what else to say, but, uh... Yeah, it's... It's kind of an unbalanced game, but it's... It's not too bad. Just don't expect it to be a competitive game, that's all I'm gonna say. It's it's fun for, you know, for a casual playthrough and, uh, you know, just for a casual, uh, you know, chat with your friends and stuff, but competitively, it's not the best. And all the characters do kind of feel the same. They do feel a bit different enough when it comes to, like, you know, the weight and all, but that's, that's kind of it. Would go 2, 3, and well, essentially most drama games afterwards do a much better job. Of the characters making the characters feel different enough from each other, well, at least with the ones I've played anyway. And, uh, yeah, as for anything else to talk about, I don't think so. I want you to count how many times I said all those repeating phrases I just said in this commentary because, um, yeah, I don't think I did a very good job here, and I need to stop doing the same fucking shit where I repeat things, I'll say, then I'll say, oh, I need to stop repeating things, and uh, yeah. Oh, another thing too, blood marks, well essentially blood, was pretty much changed to just being, you know, just regular, uh, sc scratches and stuff. Or, you know, just got removed entirely in the PAL region, PAL version I mean, not region, or whatever. And, uh, um, I'm pretty sure in the Japanese version, well I'm not even sure it is, pretty much it's just uncensored. And the English version... American version, oh my god, I'm so terrible in this video and I'm neat. Okay, I promise that's the last time I say that. Let's see how long I keep that promise. Um, yeah, I guess we could talk about the uh, voice acting in this game. Uh, the voice actors here, in the Japanese version specifically, uh, they do a pretty good job. Oh my god, water is so delicious. The best drink on the planet. Um, yeah, they're not... They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty similar, like pretty close to their original performances from the original one of the series. You can tell there's a bit of a... Uh, uh, what's the word to put? There has been some, you know... I guess you could say... You're starting to see a bit of their... What they would sound like later on as time went on in the 2000s and 2010s. But still pretty close to their, you know, prime days. And when I say prime, I all of a sudden thought of the prime drink, which I can't believe people actually buy that. And I can't believe my younger cousin actually buys that shit, which... I don't know why he does, and I don't know why or not there's people who even buy that crap, which is... That prime drink is way too expensive, and if you buy that shit, please, please spend your money on things that are actually worth spending on, not some overpriced drink, which probably doesn't even taste that good. But another thing too, uh, for some moments uh, in Goku's store, you could actually play as Gohan. And uh, yeah, as you can see right here, I was trying to do some of the other moves, some of the moves for Gohan, like the Masenko. And I did a pretty terrible job, and I ended up dying. And, uh, yeah, I had to revert to the skills, and I kinda had to... Think of... Uh, there. I had to, uh, basically just be really... You have, to be, you have to be really specific when it comes to pressing button combinations. Because fighting games are pretty fucking demanding. 
Although, if I, if I do want to say one thing, though, the game does get progressively harder. Even if you're playing on, you know, the easier modes, the easier modes and stuff, it's still challenging enough. It's really just my playing skills that are terrible and abysmal, but yeah, let's just say when you, when we get to Cell, well, Frieza and Cell fights in this game, they're kind of fucking annoying because I like staying as Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2, but the game just won't fucking let me. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of fucking annoying. And yeah, I, I died right here. Yeah, great playing skill I have right there. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, yeah, I guess I could talk about why the game uh is only goes up to like the Cell Saga. So yeah, so when Dragon Ball finally decided to come back after five years of being on hiatus in Japan, uh, the series got pretty popular outside of Japan, such as well. America, the UK, pretty much any Western country and, well, other countries as well that weren't, uh, you know, f well, I don't know which country specifically it was, but it was mostly just the English-speaking countries that got really, that basically got new, got, but, bleh. you get what I'm trying to say, but, um, yeah, and it seems as if, well, considering the fact that the Boo Saga hadn't been completely dubbed, I believe when this game came out, which was, like, late 2002, same year I was born, by the way. <laughs> I don't think I'm fucking 20 and I'm gonna be 21 this year. And this game's gonna be 21 as well. 21? <laughs> That's a terrible joke, but whatever. And so, uh... Um... Oh, I lost my train of thought. And so, they decided to just go up to the Cell Saga instead, and, uh... Yeah, we don't get a Boo Saga, although we do get uh, the Great Saiyan Man. As an unlockable character later on, and um, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because the I I think this is pretty much what caused the uh, the the theory that uh a big misconception of the series that the Cell Saga was supposed to be the final story of Dragon Ball, which is not true at all, and was Toriyama had never ever stated this at all. He wasn't forced to make a new, another final arc or anything at all, and it was never about the money because Toriyama was already rich by the time he made uh, Doctor Slump. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you're wrong on that if you think the Cell Cycle was supposed to be the final arc, and Toriyama was basically told, "Oh, I'll make another one, make another one." Toriyama just wanted to make another one because he felt like it, and he chose to end it on Boo Saga because he just wanted to, and that's that's my goal. Uh, this moment was really butchered in the English version, which I'll get more into that into the next part of the commentary. Hope to God no one disturbs me right now. But um, oh my God, this, these translations are so terrible at times. I don't know, mom. Yeah, sorry, it was just my mother calling me. Where's the one of my cats? Yeah, we got. Uh, yeah, I got a new cat and a. Uh, yeah, we're taking it's taking some time for them to get used to each other, but they're making progress. But um, yeah, this commentary wasn't that great at all. But uh, yeah, I hope I at least did a decent enough explaining. Well, I guess for some of my jumble homies out there, you you guys will know what I'm trying to say. But my the non jumble uh viewers I have, which is like two of them, uh, I, I apologize if I didn't explain it very well because. Well, I'm a complete fucking train wreck when it comes to speaking, and well, I'm a complete train wreck, train wreck when it comes to anything. Also, I really love uh, how they did uh, these next episode previews things. Uh, we really need how they did that. It really makes you feel as if you are playing the show, you know, which is pretty cool. And so I'll see you guys next time for part two. See ya.